Internet communications is only one small part of the industrial internet. So the technology is available here like it's available anywhere. Technology doesn't respect borders. So it's not just about infrastructure. It's also about knowledge. It's about making sure you have the right people who are trained to use the technology. And it's about making sure they have the opportunity to apply the technology. Much harder problem than infrastructure is avoiding change. People don't like to change. And people don't like to disrupt their, own, their current business models. So what we see everywhere where we're doing these projects, in 54 countries, is people avoiding change more than worried about infrastructure. So we have, we are planning projects in other countries that, uh, that have much less infrastructure than Brazil. Um, we're in the middle of planning a, a project in Kazakhstan, for example. And their worry is not infrastructure, their worry is knowledge and training. And that's where I think we need to put most of the focus. So I see the opportunity in Brazil is to leapfrog across technology generations. And I think organizations like ABEI are going to make that happen by working together with the international community. So there, some of the things are, are kind of obvious. For example, learning to be flexible in the face of change. But the hardest part is going to be that many companies, many industries will be disrupted. Agriculture, healthcare, transportation, manufacturing. And you have to find companies that are willing to be disrupted, that are willing to disrupt themselves rather than wait to be disrupted. And that's the difficult part. I think Brazil is training these kinds of experts every day, but they're leaving the country. To find a way for them to stay will be finding companies that are willing to change and are willing to try new things. And in Brazil you find those today in ABEI. They are founding members of ABEI because they understand disruption will happen and they want to disrupt themselves rather than wait to be disrupted. This revolution is special in that it's about cheap, cheap, cheap services. It's about low-cost processing, low-cost storage, ubiquitous communications, and low-cost analysis. So it doesn't have the high, uh, the, the high costs of other revolutions in the past. So in the Industrial Revolution, you were buying machines. Now it's software. It does not have the high costs. So I don't think you have to get over these enormous costs that you have had to get over in, in other revolutions, like the Industrial Revolution. That's a reasonable fear. And it's a, f a fear I have also. And it's a well-founded fear. In 20 years, the job of a taxi driver will be to find a new job. Because they won't be driving anymore. You will call a car, it will show up, it will take you where you're going, and then you'll leave it. I won't own a car. I will just lease them to take me from place to place. So it's a, it's a reasonable fear. But in every revolution, that we, every technology revolution that we have ever had, afterwards there are more jobs than before. And that will happen this time too. Because increased productivity creates increased demand, consumer demand, which creates more jobs. It, happens, it happened after the Industrial Revolution, it happened after the Internet Revolution, and it will happen after the Industrial Internet Revolution. But it's important to understand there's no choice. You can't stop the tide. It, it's changing. So we can prepare for it, or we can hope it doesn't happen. And the latter one doesn't work very well.